Welcome to Scoop World Order. It is Tuesday. We are right in the middle of recruiting season in May. The coaches are out burning up the rental car miles, uh, going basically coast to coast to recruit. A lot of offers are going out. Uh, official visits are getting scheduled for early June, which again is still weird for me to say because it's only been the last couple of years where you've been able to take these June official visits. But I know the coaches love them because they get to knock them out now and they don't have to worry about them in season, uh, kind of lighten the load uh, when there's a little bit less time. Uh, we're going to preview a tackle, a big time tackle who's coming in for that first weekend in June. Um, we're going to talk about a absolute monster phenom freshman. Uh, who You got to see this kid to believe him because he's a huge freshman. Like, I mean, I go back back when I was playing, I was about 6'2", 180. Even, and this kid's 6'7", 250 as a freshman. And he is, a, is all of it. He's got... We just offered him. He's got Bama, Georgia. He's a phenom's phenom. And we're going to watch this tape, uh, break him down a little bit. But first, as always, we appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Click that subscribe button right there. Thank you. Sorry, I hit the wrong way. And hit that like, uh, hit that subscribe, uh, hit that alert button when you uh, get these live feeds. Shout out where you guys are from. And let me know who is your favorite phenom of all time. You know, this trail prior. Uh, there's these guys that are like supernova talents. You see them come through. Paris Johnson was one. Uh, you know, you start hearing about them when they're freshmen, and then they just kind of rise up through the ranks. And uh, do they pan out? You know, maybe give me a guy that that you were really excited about who panned out. Maybe a guy that didn't pan out. Uh, write that down in the comments. I love reading your comments. So I appreciate you guys as always. And we are going to get right to my good friend Nevada. Nevada, how are you tonight? Man, I'm doing better than the Lakers. The Lakers are being violated by uh, by the Nuggets right now. It's uh, 72-54 at halftime. And after careful consideration, I've determined that Jokic is one of the top five players in the NBA. So Mark Jackson and his MVP vote should have had included Jokic in the top five on the ballot. How that didn't happen is anybody's guess. But uh, Jokic, I think he's got 16 or 17 rebounds at halftime. Pretty good player, pretty good NBA player. Yeah, I, I, again, I, 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 I'm not gonna get on this rabbit hole, but like, you know, there's there's this narrative with Kendrick Perkins about why you don't vote for Nikola Jokic, and it's, I mean, he's the best player in the NBA, in my opinion. I don't think, I mean, maybe you could say Giannis or some of these guys, but like, you give me one guy, I'm taking that dude because he is a production machine. He can do everything, makes his whole team better, and he is an absolute terror on the court i mean the lakers have no answer for this guy uh and they have anthony davis at center so they have a guy that probably a top five center but man when you're going with uh, against nikola Jokic, you better say your prayers and eat your wheaties man because he is crushing the lakers he's got 16 boards at half the entire lakers team has 13 so yeah you better uh you better uh, go find some courage there boys um well we're gonna get into uh, a little bit of recruiting so may is the time of the year where the coaches uh, they don't see their wives. They don't see their kids. Uh, they're on the road literally from Sunday night until Friday. Usually uh, they might be able to be around Ohio on Friday so they can get home at a decent hour. But this is a time where you're out on the road. You're seeing 2025 20, kids, 2026 20, kids. You're in Florida, Georgia, Texas, uh, California, uh, Vegas, you know, like, you know, East Coast, Maryland, uh, uh, you know, that 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 Baltimore, Washington area, maybe some PA, uh, the state of Ohio, uh, your Midwest states. But, you know, these guys have spent a lot of time in Georgia, the Carolinas right now. Um, Nevada, they, there are a lot of offers going out. Um, how do you feel about the recruiting efforts thus far? Uh, this class is pretty packed right now. we got a quarterback uh, for the 24 class. we got four offensive linemen. Uh, got a couple of running backs. Uh, you know, JJ Smith, obviously, we, I mean, our receivers are incredible. Uh, how are you feeling so far about the recruiting efforts of, of the 2024 uh, recruiting class for Ohio State? Well, again, I think when we talk about this stuff, I think people, you know, you know, we've talked about one of our core tenants being always being honest with our, with our listeners and making our listeners smarter and, and, and more educated fans. And so, we, you know, I try to call it and be fair about it and, Ryan Day and staff are killing it right now. They're killing it. And I'll be the first one to jump on them when they don't. Um, I think there's some things that they could do to make it better. Why is Parker Fleming out recruiting while James Laurinaitis is back home eating Jimmy John's at the at the uh, Woody Hayes? That doesn't make any sense to me. But can, you know, can you argue with the results, what they've done right now? No, they're, do, they're doing a terrific job. And that goes 
really across the board, you know, offensively, defensively, you know, line, you know, big, big speed, speed. I mean, they're doing a great job. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I tip my hat to them because, you know, it's recruiting right now is certainly it's never been more challenging with NIL and, and some of the different things that are going into it. And they're navigating it. OSU is getting their NIL act together, too, which is, you know, something that we've been kind of sounding the alarm about for a couple of years. They're starting to figure it out. And uh, the results are, are tangible. They're, 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 they've got a really good plan in terms of targeting kids that are not just about NIL, that are more about development. That way it's kind of culling down the list. They're not wasting time on, on people that are just NIL kids. And um, they're, they're doing a, a heck of a job. And like I said, all the credit in the world goes today because when it goes bad, Ryan gets the blame. So when it goes good, Ryan gets the credit. And Ryan... Well, you're probably not listening, Ryan, but Mark Dantoni, I know you're listening. Tell Ryan, good job. Go give him a hug from Nevada Bucks. Oh, good job, Ryan. And that should inspire him to jump on that private plane and uh, go recruit somebody else. So go get him. Oh, uh, uh, they're all listening to this, man. They love listening to our stuff. Uh, what's up, Paul? What's up, Sue? Uh, got some of the regulars in here. Uh, Jay Public, are you really watching this from Ghana right now? I don't know if I believe that. That's kind of funny if you are. Uh, Elijah Red Lakes, and we got a bunch of these guys. Red Lakes, oh, this is a cool fact. Calvin Booth, I did not know this, is a Groveport Madison graduate. That's pretty cool. So now everyone's root for Denver because he's got we got an Ohio guy running the show. That's awesome. Uh, Chase Young was absolutely a supernova. Ted Ginn Jr. was an absolute supernova. We got these guys that are talking about their favorite phenoms. Uh, put your favorite phenoms in the chat. Um, we're gonna go to a kid who. Uh, he is going to be visiting our first official visit weekend at Gerby Lambert, uh, big kid. Uh, you know, he's got the, the spectacles on, so hope he takes us off when he plays, but he's a big tackle six, seven. I know that everybody is obsessed with us getting tackles. So hopefully we get this kid, but, uh, you know, he'd be a fifth guy. I think Justin Fry ends up taking six in this class. Potentially you know, he's trying to reload, uh, you know, the portal. You already lost one kid to the portal, um, in Ben Christman, uh, we might lose a couple more. Uh, it's funny because there's, you know, something that's, that's kind of keeping these guys here uh, that really don't have a future here playing wise is that the Big Ten guarantees four year scholarships. So some of these guys, you know, they thought they're going to get shoved out the door. They didn't get any reps in the spring and they said, nope, we're going to hang out here. We're going to get internships. We're going to, you know, get the free food and go to the workouts and do whatever. So, hey, uh, better luck to him. I'd rather go play somewhere, but that's their prerogative. Um, I like a. You know what? I like Isaac Souls Jr. So I'm not sleeping on him at all. I think he's a beast. Um, like I really like that kid. So I mean, we can break his from down. He's 6'2, 285. So again, I don't get as obsessed with height, especially at center that some do, because Jacoby Bourne won a national title. And you know, we've had six foot five centers, and I mean Michael Troy's a six seven center and he didn't win a national title. So, you know, I, I like uh, I like Isaac Souls. I think he's really good. Um I'm gonna switch to this film. Real quick, now, now, before before you, before you get into that though, Mr. Burn, I got a question because you just brought up something, and I want to ask you this about this. You're talking about guys that are kind of buried on the uh, the depth chart at Ohio State, guys that may not play. You know, the, as you mentioned, the Big Ten guarantees makes you guarantee scholarships for four years. I mean, can you really blame a kid? You've talked a lot about how for kids that are Ohio kids that want to be from Ohio or that want to live in Ohio afterwards, how important that Ohio State degree is and that diploma from Ohio State and having played at Ohio State. So do you really fault any of these kids that may be third or fourth year kids that really aren't you know, part of the football plans but are like looking at the big picture and going, man, I'm going to get that Ohio State degree and hang around and, and try to get that. I mean, and I really do want your opinions. I don't, I don't know. I really don't know the answer to that. I, I think that's a, that's a great question. Again, you know, I can't speak out of both sides of my mouth on that. I think that, you know, if you're in year four and you're close to graduating, I think the, the best thing you can do when you're one of these kids is graduate as fast as possible, get that Ohio State degree done. And then if your career isn't on the trajectory that you like it to be, then you can take off and, you know, you can go have that Ohio State degree. It's a lot like Lorenzo Sells Jr. Like Lorenzo Sells Jr. has a Notre Dame degree or he will finish a Notre Dame degree. So he'll have that Notre Dame degree and he'll have that network. And then, you know, at Ohio State, you know, he's likely to you know do maybe some grad school work or whatever, uh, you know, start on his uh, his second degree. But, you know, I I don't know, like with me, when I was in in the shoes of playing at Ohio State, I was obsessed with making it to the NFL. Like I want to make it to the NFL. I want to be a good player. Um, that took precedence over everything. I never took like a, a lot of these guys. And again, and this and this isn't the right, this might not be the right way to do it. Like kids took summer internships, kids uh, you know, we're working at, you know, Chase Bank and doing all that kind of stuff in the summer. 
I was like, I'm going to go relax. I'm going to rest. I'm going to get more working out in like, you know, I just, I always wanted to maximize my rest just because I, you know, I don't want to go work. You know, I wanted to make sure that, you know, everything was about my workouts. You know, I would work out from six to eight then I'd go to class from, you know, eight 30 to God noon. And then I was done for the day. And then it was just, you know, maybe go hit the Woody, go get another workout and get some ancillary stuff done get in the cold tub, get in the hot tub, you know, stretch out a little bit and then head home uh, with, you know, a bag full of food and chill at the pool and just relax for the rest of the day. Because I, I really wanted to make sure my body was in the best form. And again, I could have gone to an internship, but, you know, I like to go into class instead of an internship during the summer because uh, you get paid. You know, the thing is, is if you go to class in the summer, if you're a part-time student, you get half your scholarship checks. If you're a full-time student, you get all your scholarship checks. So I want to be a full-time student in the summer because, the thing I figured out after the first summer when I worked is that, you know, you have to pay taxes on that. But if you, you know, if you're, um, if you're working at a, or if you're on a scholarship, you don't have to pay taxes on your scholarship checks and you make about the same amount of money. So you might as well just go get your degree done faster, uh, which is what Paris Johnson did. Paris got here early. He went to school full time in the summer and, you know, you can tear up a degree. And if you go to school and, and take summer classes, like it's not, it's not really that hard. You know, if you, if you start in, January and you have that full semester and then you have the summer semester that, that you know, you have that May semester, a little shorter semester. I mean, you could get a degree done in three years if you graduate early, especially. So, you know, I, but, but again, I wanted to play, you know, if I wasn't going to play, I was out and, and again, and I love Ohio state, but you know, like these guys should all have the ambition of wanting to be the best football players possible because that's what they were brought here for. They're brought here to be elite, all Americans. They have everything going. And again, you know, there's no shame if like, you know, uh, you know, I talk a big tough game because I you know, had a really good career at Ohio State as an All-American and all that. But like if I'm stuck behind like Corey Stringer and Orlando Pace and they're sophomores and freshmen and I'm a junior and, you know, I can't play guard, then, you know, you got a decision to make. You know, so it just kind of is what it is, because sometimes it's it's not really your choice. You know, if you're stuck behind, you know, Dwayne Haskins or Joe Burrow or whatever, like that's. You know, you got to go do what's the best for you. Like Joe Burrow did, made the greatest decision in the history of college football. We're going to the LSU and you know having that magical year and, and being the number one pick. And you know he, he's set up to make sixty million dollars a year on his next contract. So, you know, again, it's kind of both. You know, like like I think I you know I understand why I would want to stay and do the internships and all that, but man, I'd want to go play. Man, I'd want to go prove them wrong. I'd have a big chip on my shoulder, but. That's just me. You know, again, I, I wanted to play and, and honestly, I want guys that, that want to play. Like I, I have a lot of respect for Ben Christman who he just took off. He's heading to Kentucky. Um, you know, and he's the guy that you know, he wants to go play and he was in the two deep. He was a backup, you know, backup guard for us. And he wants to start this year. So, I mean, I mean, he looked around at the depth charts and went to, went to Kentucky and Hey, I mean, he might start there. Who knows? But that's, uh, that's just my opinion. Um, yeah, we're watching a little bit of this film. This is a uh, Gerby Lambert. He's a big old boy. Um, you know, we'll roll this through one more time, then we'll get to the phenom. But uh, what are your thoughts on that, Nevada? Because again, I I had teammates that talked about transferring. I mean, obviously, back when I played, transferring unless you went down to one double A, um, you know, you, you're eligible right away if you went down to like play for the Youngstown uh, Youngstown State Penguins or whatever. But if you went to another one A school, you're you're sitting out of here and playing scout team. So transferring, there was this huge roadblock that doesn't exist anymore. But what are your thoughts on that? Well, again, I just, I don't doubt, you know, or, or, or really look down at anybody that does it because, you know, to your point, if Corey Stringer's the right tackle, Kirk Barton ain't playing right tackle at Ohio State. You know no, what I'm saying? No, no, nobody would ever hear of Kirk Barton if Corey Stringer was no. a, a sophomore and I was a junior or if he was a freshman no. and, you know, so it's, that's yeah. just life. That's just life, and it's just it's sad. Mm-hmm. That, is, that doesn't lessen what a great player you were at Ohio State, but you know you ain't you ain't playing in front of Corey Stringer. So it's like yeah. you know sometimes you just got to get your opportunity, and you know life's funny how it comes down to a few moments, and it's it's things that are, some are in your control, some are out of your control because you couldn't control that there wasn't some once in a you know lifetime player that was in front of you because if that had happened, Kirk you know, and I know you wouldn't have played and you'd have been great at Stanford or wherever you'd have been, but it wouldn't have been as a Buckeye. And and that would have been sad. But, you know, um, that's why when I see these kids, you know, transferring, I'm like, you know, I I never begrudge a kid to transfer that wants to go out and play somewhere. Because as you said, you know, you spent your whole life preparing for this moment. And it may just be that there's somebody that's just better than you. And that's okay. There's there's no shame in that. So, uh, 
yeah, I, I like I said, I think I think these transfers generally work out best for for all involved. They work out best for the school. They work out best for the kid. And as you mentioned, the uh, the we talked about the Joe Burrow thing a million times, but I mean, I I I, I still cannot get over the fact that I, somebody went from I'm going to be a car salesman to I'm going to be making maybe a billion dollars in my NFL career with one with one transfer. I mean, I I'm still when you think about that, when you kind of roll that one around in your head, it kind of it, it just absolutely blows me away. Yeah, I mean, it, it was like you know, and again, his own dad. You know, Bill Green's told the story about times he was talking to his dad, and his dad was like, you know, we're hoping that he can get invited to a camp, maybe be a seventh round pick, and maybe get a chance to make a roster. And I swear to God, it's like Joe. If you guys have ever seen the movie Limitless, it's a great movie. You take the pill, and then you just turn into. The, the smartest human being in the world. You can do computations on all it's going to do. Like it was like, he took the limitless pill and all of a sudden Joe Burrow became, you know, Tom Brady and everything. It was like this, like, you know, Jamar chase became the greatest receiver in college football history. And Justin Jefferson was like the second. I mean, so it was like this insane amount of talent that just all came together at once. And, you know, those guys are a problem. I mean, they had a great offensive line, their offensive line won the, the Joe Moore word for the top O line. So, you know, um, but we're going to switch over to the phenom. Now I'll tell you what, Spike, that might be the ultimate, uh, a supernova is Maurice Claret. Cause in high school, my Perry Panthers, when I was a freshman, um, you know, we had a freshman team, a JV team and, um, you know, the varsity team and in, in our freshman, never, we didn't play JV or varsity. We were always on the freshman team. So we had a freshman scrimmage and, my my friend Josh Shimmick's brother, older brother, was on the varsity team. So we actually drove up to Warren Harding to watch the varsity scrimmage versus Warren Harding. And Maurice Claret was a sophomore. And I in this scrimmage, I swear to God, he ran for 500 yards. I mean, it was like and, and we were good. Like we actually went to the final or we went to the uh the final eight in division one. And we we're, you know, little D one school, you know, we're playing Ignatius and St. Ed's and we beat Maslin in the playoffs. They were number one in the state. We beat McKinley that year. So we were good, but when we scrimmage Warren Harding, when Maurice was a sophomore, I mean, he literally looked like Adrian Peterson, Jim Brown. Like he was like that guy. I mean, it was just like, you know, he would, our guys can tackle him and he was so fast. It was crazy, but yeah, that that's a great one. You know, I gotta see if his high school film or if he has a highlight tape somewhere um, on likes. I would love to break down some of his stuff. He gotta come on my podcast. I've been texting him. I was like, dude, you gotta come on my podcast, it's my boy. Um, and that's the guy that I, I would have loved to have played with because I loved his uh, his his nastiness and violence that he ran with. So we're talking a little bit about uh, Kendra Harrison. This is this kid, six seven, two thirty seven. Uh, God spent a lot of time on this guy because to be that big when you're 14 or whatever this kid is, is insane. Uh, he's got, he, we just offered him, he got Bama, got Georgia. So he's got the big dogs. Um, you know, a future cast this early when he's literally about to be a, he's literally in freshman English right now. He's a freshman in high school. Um, or just finished his freshman year. He's about to start a sophomore year. Uh, just a big monster. Uh, we're going to turn this film on because, I mean, he's, you know, we haven't seen a lot of this guy yet. But uh, Nevada, you know, we talk phenoms like a 6'7", he's probably 250 now, 250-pound tight end. Like, you know, do you think a guy like that stretches out to be a tackle or do you think he just turns into like a like a Darnell Washington, like the kid from Georgia who's just this monstrous tight end? Well, yeah, it's funny because that was my first thought. My first thought when I saw him was I wonder if he'll end up as an offensive tackle, you know, because with the premium that he put on those guys and those, you know, it would seem like a natural transition. But it'll be interesting to keep an eye on it because he's so gifted, you know, so gifted, so young, and you know, everybody's in on him. You know, this is a this is an <laughs> Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, USC, Texas. I mean, it's all the big boys in on this guy. And uh, when you watch the tape, you'll immediately understand why. I mean, he's gigantic, and this is varsity football. You know, they're playing obviously at North Carolina Stadium. Um, you know, and and he's graceful. Like, I mean, for me, that big, that young, a lot of kids that are that big, they're not very. I mean, here he just kills a guy again. This is a short clip of just him, of him. Yeah, you know, he he's in this. You know, he's uh, just kind of lined up as a tight end. 
right here you got Mark Pantone, you got you got MP playing middle linebacker, you got Pantone, and he just boom. But again, like he should do that. He's you know a hundred pounds bigger than that guy. But and and you know this is decent ball. This isn't great ball. This isn't Georgia ball. This is Carolina ball. But the dude gets open, and, and again, like you throw it up to him. I mean, he's he's a he's a really good basketball player. Obviously, you can tell that. Um, you know, so he's a high level basketball player. Again, I don't know if he's going to turn into a seven foot center because if you're six seven as a freshman and you catch a growth spurt, man, you could grow into seven foot two, um, and be Jokic. But yeah, he, you know, again, this, they're feeding him early in this game, so he's not just a guy that you know gets one catch. I mean, this is three catches in the same game. Um, you know, so for a freshman, that's pretty good. But yeah, this kid is. You know, we have a lot of phenoms that are like, you know, they're speed guys or they're, um, you know, they, they dominate eighth grade ball. This guy's dominating varsity football as a ninth grader. And, uh, you know, he's he's physical here. He's a DN, which is now that's terrifying. If this kid plays DN, now he's, you know, he's not coming off the rock super hard right there. But if he ever figured it out, because DN would be that'd be scary. Six, seven, two sixty. Uh, those long arms are just uh, impossible to go against. Um, this is probably going to be, I guess this would be a fade because anyone with a brain would throw a fade to the guy that's <laughs> like, look at, like, what are you supposed to do? Like, look at this poor corner. This corner is just like, what am I supposed to do when they do this? They do the alley-oop to this kid, you know, any coach with a brain's like, yeah, we're just going to throw it up really high. And like, the guy's just like, what am I supposed to do coach? But, um, and again, like, could he be a defensive end? Maybe like, I don't know. I mean, like he's. He's a big dude, you know. He's gotta he's gotta come off the rock a little bit harder. But again, he's a freshman. Like when most guys are freshmen, they're playing JV, and this kid's you know he's playing big varsity ball, and he's got great hands. He's got soft hands. Um, I mean, he's like it's hard to compare him to like Jelani Thurman because he's the same size as Jelani Thurman now. He's not as strong as Jelani, but uh, you know Jelani's four years older. Um, in the film that we've watched a million times, but. You love the six seven. You love the um, the intangibles. Uh, and again, like I'm like you, can this guy grow into a three hundred and ten pound tackle? Like if he's if if he's smart with this type of athleticism, I'm teaching him how to vertical set and play left tackle. And, and that's just me because I, anytime I see a guy who's this big and this young, I just think that there's no way that he's going to be able to stay because you know, he ought to be in six nine. Um, and he's going to end up weighing 275 and maybe he'll stay athletic enough to stay at tight end. Maybe he'll, he'll keep his weight down, but if he's already 245 ish or 250 ish and he's this young, man, I mean, who knows what he's going to, you know, when he really starts hitting the weights and eating and whatever, I mean, this kid's going to fill out pretty big cause he is, he is a absolute mis- <laughs> it's just funny. It's like, like, I mean, it's almost like he, he feels bad for the guys he's going against. Cause I mean, you know, like he could kill this guy. I mean, look at, look at this, you know, again, this is, you know, I call him the Pantones, these little tiny guys. And I mean, he could kill this guy. He's, he's, and again, let's, you know, does he have a killer instinct? You know, he doesn't seem like he's that big of a prick. I wish he was a little, if he just bury this guy. Cause again, in football, you know, there's no penalties for dominating a guy that you're just better than, or, or, or you're bigger than, or you're stronger than or whatever. So, you know, like, I think that that you just go to see how nasty you are. It's like there's no reason he ta- he should take that playoff and, and take it easy on that guy. Um, but what are your thoughts so far, Nevada? Because again, I I don't know who I'd compare this guy to. I mean, the guy from George is a great comp just because he was like a super sized tight end, kind of a tackleish guy. But you know, I, I'd love to see this guy in person, see how wide he is and how broad he is in terms of his hips and everything, just to see if he's if he truly would fill out. But I mean, you see him catch and run with the ball, man. You're like, holy cow. Yeah, no, he's he's definitely graceful, and you, you normally you see those uh, those big freshmen, and they look like you know big baby deers or baby cows or whatever it is, and they're kind of like their limbs are all over the place, and they're just trying to figure it out. And now, I mean, I mean this this kid's definitely he's got it all going on. He's really well coordinated, but you know, to your point, I don't I don't see him as a defensive player. You know, I don't think he's Ted Hendricks or Ed Too Tall Jones or anything on the defensive side, but as an offensive tackle, you know, I I. I I, I'd be worried he's going to outgrow the position at tight end. And, you know, uh, I think offensive tackle makes an awful lot of sense. And that wouldn't surprise me at all. And that, that's some of the talk out, out from, from his high schools that they, they may be taking a, a look at making a, a move on that for next year. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as we kind of go forward. But, yeah, I see him as an offensive tackle and a, and a really good one. Yeah, I mean, but, man, you watch his hands, man. He's got some soft hands. And this guy's catching everything. And, 
you know, like I said, it'd just be interesting to see, you know, is football his true passion? Because like I said, he's a he's a, a high level recruit in basketball too. And you know, is he some kid that's crazy and wants to try to play both? I mean, here he's getting a sack coming off the edge. The cameraman's kind of falling asleep. He's probably sipping on his cocoa here because it looks cold in Carolina. But you know, I mean, again, this is a freshman, so you know, is, is he Mario Williams? I, don't know. I mean, so, I mean, if you're six seven, man, that's a problem for offensive tackles, man, because those long arms and. Yeah, he kills this quarterback here. That's a grounding penalty. So that's a sack. Um, you know, and so I and a thing I love that is something that you don't pick up from the film is that well, I mean, you don't pick up from watching the film is that he plays both ways. Like that's something that's like a lost art in modern high school football is that these kids, you know, the coaches think these kids are made out of porcelain, so they don't let them play both ways or they think they'll get a boo-boo or they'll get a little too tired or whatever. But like in high school, if you're a good player, you should play both ways. Like Brandon Ennis played both ways. He played receiver and he played free safety and linebacker. So, you know, again, if you're trying to win, you know, these kids, you know, let these kids play both ways. You know, they'll be okay. They'll be fine. They're not, they won't get a boo-boo if they got to play defense a little bit. And, um, you know, if, if he's a, a really uh, a big dude, then play him. Uh, I used to always like playing one and a half ways. It's kind of what I did my senior. I'd, I'd take every other series of defense and every series of offense. So, you know, being Zach Slates would rotate on defense and it kind of kept us a little bit fresher because we were bigger guys. Um, you know, and then we had a lot of guys that went one way just because they didn't really fit what we were doing on both sides of the ball. But you know, I, I, I think this kid is like, this kid is, you know, one of the best tapes I've seen of a freshman in varsity football. And again, this isn't great competition, but you know, you, you look at the intangibles, you look at how he can catch the ball. I mean, you see multiple touchdown passes, high points, multiple sacks. So he's really productive. Like a lot of these freshman tapes we watch, you know, you're watching JV football. This isn't JV football. This is varsity football. And, you know, again, they they throw it up to him and he goes and gets it. And, you know, no matter what level of football you're at, if, if you got a six, seven guy out there at, in the NFL, you can throw it up to him because you're not going to have a six, seven corner out there. <laughs> yeah. I, I love this guy. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's another, you know, again, he runs to the ball. He's tough. Like, again, this, this is, this guy will be a five-star top 10 player in the country, just based off what I've seen, um, on this tape and just off his offer sheet. I mean, there's like many offer sheets like this kid's, um, you know, so him, Chris Henry, Tyrell, I consider three of the super phenoms in that 26 class. And, uh, wow. Um, so this is, uh, this is rewound at the beginning, but yeah, what'd you think of that, Nevada? I mean, what would you grade? Would you grade that kid five stars if you were if you're grading him right now? Well, I mean, to me, like if you look back on the great high school tight ends, you know, what I'm saying like that, and you're talking about, you know, the the Ricky Dudleys and the uh, the Kirk Bartons and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, like he's right there with them. You know, he's right there with the greats. And I'd love to do like a side by side comparison of the the, the the Kirk Barton high school huddle recruiting tape. And his, and just kind of uh, examine the the uh, the similarities and the differences. You know, honestly, like I, I wasn't good in high school. I'd be the first to admit it. I was I was just a guy. Oh, I was, stop, stop. No, I'm I'm serious. Good. I wasn't. I, I wasn't. Very good. I just got I got recruited to Ohio State. Well, I, I mean, but but I, I'm just saying, like, I mean, like, if I watched my film, like, you know, I I was a guy that was really good at camp. And I was really aggressive and, you know, it was a fist fight every day and I took it seriously and I dominated camp. Like at Ohio state, I dominated camp. So, you know, and again, I was, I was the lightest offensive line. There I was 265. All these other guys are 300 pounds. And I just dominated camp. Like I, I dominated the defensive line in a one-on-one pass rush. Um, I didn't lose a rep. I ran a four, seven, all these other guys running like five, fives, five, sixes. Like they're slow. They're fat. Um, so, you know, again, I was an intangibles pick, you know, a projection pick. And, you know, again, like in modern football, like, you know, can you, you know, they talk about taking projects and I'm like, well, I was, I was a project. I was a guy that, you know, I needed to red shirt. I needed a couple of years, but you know, by year two, I, I wanted to start. Like I wasn't, I wasn't there to just, you know, I wasn't there to just, you know, uh, take it easy on guys. I was, I was there to, to, to go take a job as a redshirt freshman and, that's kind of the mentality you have to have. You got to have a chip on your shoulder. You got to be like, you know, all these guys that got offered earlier than me, like the Brandon Moppins and those guys, like I, it's Shion, and, and I love Shion Cotton. I love Brandon Moppin, but like I was coming to punish him every single day, every day at practice. I was coming to punish him because they had it nice and easy and I didn't. And that's, that was a spy mentality. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but you know, I think that 
That's now, lacking no, sometimes. Now, What's up? Now, 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 is, is it true that you ran the four seven because you wore special shoes? You wore special track shoes. No, I, I, I no, I abs, I absolutely bought track. I, I bought track spikes, and, and we ran it on field turf, so it wasn't the super duper. Uh, it wasn't astro turf, like because you used to have a strip of astro turf down at the far end of the end zone. But you know, all the forties now are done on the same field turf that every NFL team and every college team plays on. So. It's the same filter, it's got little grains of tires uh, in the ground, but I bought 100 meter track spikes for that. Like I didn't run it in my big fat lineman shoes, my big slow shoes. I wanted the lightest, fastest. I put those spikes in the ground and dude, I mean, and that makes a difference. I mean, people can laugh and say it's stupid, but hey man, when you're, when every 10th of a second counts, I mean, you want, you know, if you don't run in track shoes, like when these guys are running the 40 at, Lucas Oil Stadium for the combine. The ones that don't run in like 100 meter track shoes are idiots. I'm just telling you, like it's it's the best 150 bucks you'll ever spend in your life because you'll have the best grip, the, the lightest shoes, the fastest shoes, and you know you're only running 40 yards. And as soon as you go to drills, so you switch them out and put your cleats on. But yeah, I absolutely did that because I I was like, why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you try to give yourself every advantage possible um, to run fast? Because again, you was that was, was that the lar- was that the largest set of t- track spikes ever sold anywhere? I, or I, dude, back in the day, man, I had to I had to get on East Bay and try to find them because they didn't sell them in the stores, and nobody nobody's a size fifteen with hundred meter track spikes on. But <laughs> it, it wasn't like the internet where you just sort and filter and find your shoe size. But you know, again, like I wasn't, I took it really seriously. Like I was not coming there to to not get an offer and. And it was a fist fight. And, and you, you know, you wanted, you know, and the thing I've always told kids, you know, because I've told kids to do combine stuff you know, and they're getting the combine, like, look, they don't write down the kind of shoe you're wearing when you run your 40. They write down four, six, seven, or they get the laser time, four, four, oh, or four, three, five, or whatever. They don't say four, three, five in linebacker cleats or Nike Vapors or Apocalypses or whatever, you know, whatever shoe you're wearing, sharks, the big fat sharks. Like, you know, so I was like, I'm going to wear the lightest shoes I can. Um, but no, I really like this kid's film's legit. I mean, he's a legit kid, man. And, you know, I, I think he's got to be one of the top guys. If he wasn't a tight end, he'd probably be ranked higher, but he's got to be a top 15 guy in, in his class. Cause I can't imagine there's guys that are more impressive than that or that are that young. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I love it. What, what am I supposed to stop? So Sue's like dying laughing on this thing. She's probably talking about me being a, a bus. It's funny, like a lot of people think that Dylan Riola is going to be a bust. Nevada, do you have a call either way? Dylan Riola going to Georgia? Is he going to bust out? Is he going to stay at Georgia for three years? He's got transfer portal. What is your, if you look into a crystal ball, what do you project for a former Ohio State uh, Bobby Buckeye, favorite Buckeye in the world, Dylan Riola um, for Ohio State? I think and Georgia. he ends up I think he ends up transferring. I think he'll, he'll end up. Too his career at Arizona or Arizona state or something like that. That's, that's, uh, that's my prediction. Um, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, it, it's hard to predict, you know, bus land for a guy that some people consider to be the number one player in the country, but yeah. you know, we'll see. I, I mean, to, you know, with, with this pronouncement, I'll probably go out and throw for 87,000 yards or something like that and be the, uh, the, the greatest player in the history of college football, but I don't see it, but, been wrong before, but we'll be wrong again. So, but we'll we'll definitely be monitoring this one closely. No, I I you know again I, I just I think in George's offense I don't think that's possible. I really don't. I think you can put up nice numbers, but you know they they're ground and pound. And you know, Seth and Bennett put up some decent numbers, but you know he got playing the SEC man. He got to play LSU, go play Bama, Florida. Like he's got to play like some some dudes now, and it's it's hard to put up numbers in that conference because you're playing playing at the swamp and at Death Valley and at a and m like you're playing guys that have similar talent to you you got in the big 10 you're playing nine turds and then you've got michigan and then you've got maybe wisconsin or some ancillary team that's kind of like a mid-tier turd but you know i i don't know i, I think when you know when you look at it you know if i'm a quarterback i'll say this a million times aaron Nolan might be the smartest quarterback in the universe because if i can throw it to ennis and tate and jj smith there isn't a place on this universe i'd rather go to I mean, because it makes your life so much easier when you have three absolute five-star monsters to throw the ball to guys that they have big ambitions. They want to go to the league. They're already pros, pros or guys that live in the facility. They're on the jugs machine probably right now while we're podcasting at 10 o'clock at night. Um, I know my boy Ennis is salty because he's a Lakers fan and my, my boy Jokic is at 28, 19 and 12 so far. And there's still another quarter to go. So 
you know, he might go 20, you know, 40, 20 and 20. So, but, um, I don't know. I, I just think that like, if you're, if you're serious about what you're doing, you want to go to Ohio state, you want to play for Ryan day, but that's just my opinion. Um, it's funny, man. I just don't. Yeah. I, I was going to say like he, uh, he, so JJ Smith's going to take an official defense at great. I don't know why, but again, you gotta remember these on these officials, the schools can, can fly him up. He gets to eat lobster tail and steak, gets to hang out with the co-eds. So whatever. I mean, he can go do whatever he wants. He's going to end up being a Buckeye. You know, again, the only, the only thing that could change that is if Brian Hartline goes elsewhere. If he goes to be a head coach somewhere, goes to be an NFL coordinator, that's it. Otherwise he's a Buckeye. So, you know, as long as Brian's here, JJ's here, he's not going to be messing around at Georgia and, you know, outside of, um, and George Pickens, like, I mean, George doesn't have a, a huge lineage of receivers since A.J. Green. Like, A.J. Green was a long time ago. That was about 13 years ago that he got drafted, or 10 years ago, whatever it was. So, one yeah, of that yeah, old... Yeah, but Kirk, let, me, let, let, me take it, let me take it one more step. I mean, it's not even like the Willie Williams days where they're doing this. With NIL, <laughs> you can pay these kids appearance fees to come visit your school. So it's like, oh, it's not yeah. even like hey, Absolutely. we're going to whine it. We're going to whine and dine you and you're going to get to meet the hostesses and, you know, have the thing. It's like, you're going to get paid to come visit these schools. I mean, it's, it's absolutely insane how much it's changed. Uh, NIL, it's all about the kids. Well, yeah. I mean, like, and, and here's the thing. If you guys want to know the deep, dark secrets of NIL, there are schools and collectives that are literally offering guys like JJ Smith just to decommit from Ohio State. They don't have to commit to their school. You know, I mean, there, there's cash figures out there just to decommit and get the hype train swirling. And then there's cash offers to come visit places and there's cash offers to, you know, go to a camp, you know? So again, like I, guys are literally getting offered real money to decommit, not, not, and not even have to commit. Like there's no contingency. So you have to decommit and come to Florida or Miami or wherever, but, that's real. Again, it's it's as greasy and slimy and as unscrupulous as you could ever imagine, but that is where we're at right now. And again, you know, these these camps like rivals and and those guys, they all you know, they all want JJ to be there because it's just a different level of buzz when a guy like JJ Smith shows up. Uh these schools will do anything. I mean, Penn State has some serious NIL, especially in wrestling. They buy every good wrestler there is. So they have the, that's why their wrestling team just destroys everybody, along with Kale Sanderson, who's a great coach. But they've got serious money in, in hockey and in NIL. So, you know, it would have surprised me if, if and again, I, I, I this is just totally guessing, because I don't know why on earth J.J. Smith from, uh, you know, uh, Miami would want to go to State College in the summer, but whatever. But, you know, th there's some serious NIL stuff going on, but... I'll just leave it at that. So uh, any final thoughts about it? Watch this last quarter of the game. But uh, any final thoughts on the Phenom and uh, some of the guys that we talked about tonight? No, just uh, Ryan Day and staff continuing to do a nice job. And, uh, I, you know, they're uh, they're really positioning us well for, you know, the 2023 you know, class and beyond. They're just, you know, doing a great job, really hitting it hard. And before you know it, we're going to be – deep into fall ball. So I just can't wait. I'm, I, I cannot wait for this season. I think it's going to be a big year for Iowa State, a really big year, a special year, and uh, I can't wait to kick it off. I totally, absolutely agree with you, my man. Well, we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, crew. Thank you, everybody, for being a part of this tonight. As always, we appreciate you guys tuning in live. It's always fun to interact with you guys. You guys bring outstanding insight, outstanding questions. So, Thank you guys so much. Um, again, if you enjoyed this content, please leave us a like. Click subscribe. Click that little alert bell so you know every time we go live. We love having you guys on here. We love kicking it with you guys. It's a blast. Um, shout out where you're from and let me know who are your phenoms. Who are the phenoms that you look forward to seeing at Ohio State? Um, maybe give me some names from the past. Maybe some from the future because we got some young kids committed that are monsters and I'm super excited about it. Um, again, we're killing it on the recruiting path and uh, – let me know what other recruits you need to get to round out this 24 class. I want to hear those names. So appreciate you guys as always. Thank you so much, Bucket Nation. And thank you, Scoop family. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. You guys have a great rest of your night. Roll, Nuggets, roll.